Hello and welcome to the Friday, March 30th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Apple today had again one of its surprise patch days and we received updates for nine different products, which essentially is the entire Apple product portfolio, starting with iOS, Watch OS, TV OS, and OS 10. For older versions of OS 10, there is also an update for Safari. And then for Windows, we have updates for iTunes and iCloud. And finally, an update for the developer tool Xcode. Among all the vulnerabilities being patched, there are a couple that sort of uh, caught my attention. First of all, in OS 10 or Mac OS, we have a patch for terminal. Apparently a command injection issue was addressed that is triggered by copy pasting code into a terminal. And then in Apple's new APFS, the Apple file system, there is a vulnerability where your passphrase for encrypted volumes may get truncated. And finally, a sort of interesting vulnerability in mail. If you are receiving an encrypted SMIME HTML email, there may be cases where part of the content leaks, in particular if images are being included. This particular issue was addressed by just not loading any remote images if the signature is invalid or missing. But then of course, including remote resources in an encrypted email, that has sort of a potential to really go wrong very quickly. Nothing too terribly exciting in tvOS and watchOS other than a long list of WebKit vulnerabilities that are being addressed here. Of course, those WebKit vulnerabilities are also addressed in iOS and the other products released by Apple. For iOS, there is sort of one interesting issue that's being addressed here and that affects Find My iPhone. Apparently, it was possible for an attacker with physical access to the phone to disable Find My iPhone without actually having to enter the iCloud password. But I believe that requires that the iPhone is unlocked. So if the thief has a locked phone, that wouldn't work. This would, however, work in situations where you sort of you know, lose track of your phone. You don't notice right away that it was stolen or it was stolen while it was unlocked. Overall, I don't see any huge issues here. Overall, I don't see any huge issues here. There was a bug that was reported recently where Siri was able to read hidden notifications if the iPhone was locked. So I have to see if that was a trust that's not explicitly being listed in this update as far as I can tell. I recommend you upgrade. You don't have to rush it necessarily, but there are also a number of privacy enhancements that have been rolled into this update. And it looks like we have sort of a little wave here of more targeted ransomware attacks. This may just be because the news is sort of picking up on them. But overall, we have seen kind of a decline in ransomware. This is different in so far as they do affect very specific entities. You probably heard about the city of Atlanta a week ago. And then also now a power company in India was compromised with ransomware. And the hacker in this case is asking for about $150,000 or 10 million rupees. I think there's a good reminder that uh, tax are always changing and particularly with ransomware in the past they were sort of near your average uh, malicious spam message essentially. Now these new attacks uh, they're a little bit more targeted so they get around some of the basic defenses that people have put in place against uh, these more random ransomware attacks. Initial coin offerings were also a big issue sort of at the end of last year. Don't hear a lot of these anymore either, but we now have some studies looking into what happened to all of these initial coin offerings. The latest one done by the Satis group did look at initial coin offerings that exceeded $50 million in market cap. And well, what they found was that 81% of these initial coin offerings were scams and only a total of 4% actually ended up being successful. Now, there were quite a few that basically just disappeared or failed that weren't really characterized as a scam from the ones that actually went to 
to start trading, which was 8% uh, of the total. About half, as I said, uh, was successful. The rest either uh, never really developed, they're sort of disappearing, and there's still 1.6% that may actually have some promise. Of course, more recently, a lot of online platforms restricted advertisements for ICOs, so that probably isn't helping either. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.